All right, I want to talk a little bit here about what this season meant and what comes next. Jim all touched on it a bit. First, what this season meant. As the season got underway, I spent a fair amount of time talking about Doug Peterson's approach and the way he coached compared to Urban Meyer. There were actually some viewers who wrote in and wondered why I was spending so much time looking back at Meyer. The fact is that it was so dramatic, the change from one coach to the next, even before the results started to come in, you could tell that things were changing, so I reported on it. Then when the Jaguars won games against the Colts and Chargers in the first quarter of the season, it appeared that change had happened in a hurry and that the Jaguars were responding. Then October arrived. Five straight losses. Well, we know what happened next. We can talk about progress made by Trevor Lawrence or the impact of a healthy Travis Etienne or Rayshon Jenkins having a career year with regard to impact plays or half a dozen other factors that came from player performance. The fact is that it was Peterson's steady presence that allowed that all to happen. The Jaguars were better than a three-win team last year roster-wise, and they were better this year too. I think that really underlines the impact that a head coach can have on the tone and culture of a team. Peterson hit all the right notes. All right, now let's take a look ahead. What comes next for the Jaguars? Let's talk free agency first. Here are the Jaguars players, some of the key players who become unrestricted free agents now. Ingram and Key are the top two targets to keep here as far as I'm concerned. Smoot will depend on how he recovers from his Achilles injury. Will Marvin Jones be happy with Calvin Ridley being brought in? Taylor had a good year, but will the Jaguars be willing to spend money on him when they have Walker Little sitting there ready to step in, still on a rookie contract? Finally, how much do the Jaguars value the blocking of Manhurts? Are they willing to spend to keep him? The salary cap is expected to be over $220 million next season. That's up from 208 this year. Before the cap goes up, the Jaguars are about $20 million over the cap for next season. With the expected increase, let's assume that's really more like $12 million. They can uh, make some room by restructuring contracts as well. Josh Allen, for instance, maybe Roy Robertson Harris. I suspect that we're probably uh, going to say we've seen the last of Shaq Griffin in a Jaguars uniform. The Jags can save something in the $13.5 million range under the cap if they cut him free. Cutting Caleb on chase on would save another $2.4 million. At some point in the next year or two, the Jaguars are going to give Trevor Lawrence a big contract. That actually will help free up more cap space in the future based on the way the deal will be structured. But it's always advantageous for a team who wants to be a contender to have a quarterback on his rookie deal, and that's where the Jaguars are right now. Unlike last year and the year before, and most years in recent memory, the Jaguars aren't picking near the top of the draft. The Jags won't make a pick until number 24 in the first round. If they can add a few pieces in free agency, they can simply take the best player available regardless of position. Here are some needs. Number one, to me, pass rusher. If the Jaguars are going to overcome teams quarterback by the likes of Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen or Joe Burrow, they absolutely have to have better pass rush. They don't have to be Saxonville level, but they do need to make opposing quarterbacks more uncomfortable than they did at least against the elite quarterbacks most of this year. They should also look to improve nickel corner. If Darius Williams stays on the outside, as I think he should, then uh, they need to have a top-line cover man to complement him along with Tyson Campbell. The offensive line is going to need a look as well. The Jaguars don't have much depth there. Basically two guys that they could go in with. Uh, both Tyler Shatley and Walker Little were starting by the end of the year due to injuries. Adding at least one veteran offensive lineman will be key. I think the Jaguars could use another option at running back beyond Travis Etienne. Jamichael Hasty had some good moments, but I'd like to see them add another guy there. Snoop Connor didn't do as much as a rookie, but maybe he can improve. And uh, did I mention pass rush? If the money works out, finding two pass rushers in free agency would be a huge benefit for the Jaguars' success next year. Finally, we can expect some of this year's rookie class to show improvement. I'd like to say all, but it rarely happens that way. But if Trayvon Walker could take a step forward as a pass rusher, and linebackers Devin Lloyd and Chad Muma, along with center Luke Fortner, are better next year than they were as rookies, well, the Jaguars will be in good shape to do more than simply compete. They can challenge for the AFC Championship.